Dartmoor, the largest chunk of granite upland in the UK, just a short spit away from the county town of Exeter in South Devon. From a car, precious little of it is visible, but venture off the beaten track and you are rewarded with one of the remotest and desolately beautiful areas in the UK. My name is Richard Warwick and I am a podgy, unfit armchair explorer. I dream a lot of walking in wild and remote places. Sadly, most of my adventures are thwarted by lethargy and inertia, but occasionally, just occasionally, the plans hatched on the sofa become a reality. So our adventure takes us right across Dartmoor, from Ivy Bridge in the south, right up to Oak Hampton in the north. A proper adventure in a weekend, a two-day 25-mile hike across this fantastic landscape. The perfect place to test the heart function of a tardy wannabe adventurer. Day one, and my journey starts today on the southern tip of the moors in Ivy Bridge, with its Ivy Bridge, not unsurprisingly. My destination for today lies over 16 miles to the north in the village of Princetown. I'm a keen walker, an unfit, overweight walker, guaranteed, but a keen one nevertheless. It's just the right pace for me. A pace my poor little brain can keep up with. Western Beacon. My first tour of the day, 334 metres above sea level. Although remote today, Dartmoor has a history of habitation and industry stretching back thousands of years. From Butterdon Hill, evidence of that is clear. At nearly 400 metres high, a Bronze Age stone road cuts through prehistoric settlements for over two kilometres. Whatever its function, it feels like it was meant to be walked along. A guided tour in stone, if you will, to show off these ancient wonders. Hiles Hill! That's what you'd have if you sat here too long. 387 metres above sea level. And bloody windy. Time for my poor old legs to take things easier for the next few miles as we join the disused Red Lake Tramway, the Puffing Billy track. This track was built in 1911. It's eight and a half miles long and it was built to ferry men and supplies from Mitterford down there in the south up to the Red Lake Clay Works another four miles or so further on. Amazingly, up to this point, I've been lucky with the weather. It is Devon, though, and the heavens suddenly opened, lashing me with rain and hail capable of taking the skin off my face. And I'm starting to hurt. A lot. Less than halfway through day one, my legs are painful and I am getting very, very wet. A combination that questions why in the world I would choose to do this over, say, staying in bed. But as I struggle onto the Abbot's Way, the weather does improve. And my stomach finally shuts up with the promise of some well-earned lunch. Now this is the route I should be taking to Plym's Ford. But as the weather closes in again, I end up missing the path, taking a slightly more circuitous and needless to say longer route. Longer under these conditions is most definitely not better. This does little to improve my spirits. This is the ford over the river Plym, the source of which is about half a mile up there and it dumps out 19 miles down there in Plymouth. We stupidly decided to do this walk 
after the wettest January and February on record. But it looks like we can get over this, so uh, let's have a go. So, with the inexplicable joy of fording a two-foot string coursing through my veins, and barely able to lift my aged legs off the ground, I trudge the final few miles into Princetown. Each step is agony. I'm starting to wonder quite how I'm going to manage a similar distance tomorrow, while well, without a suitcase of ice packs and a team of Swedish masseurs. Nevertheless, day one of my adventure is nearly done. 16 miles is modest by some people's standards, but I've done it, hauling my 43-year-old carcass across southern Dartmoor. And I can almost smell the pub. I absolutely love walking pubs. I mean, not pubs that walk, but pubs with walkers in them, obviously. You can spot them a mile off. You can generally smell them a mile off, too. And one of the best things about a day's walking is the guilt-free gastronomic blowout at the end. So, refueled by steak and other people's odours, day one of our Dartmoor adventure is complete. Day two. What a beauty. So, slight change of plan today in that we've set off from Postbridge Slightly shorter walk, only 10 miles today, largely because I was a bit of a grumpy get towards the end of yesterday. Had a bit of a groin problem, sparing you all the details, but fairly painful the last few miles yesterday. I patched myself up, bit of freeze spray, does well to good. So patched up, ready to go, 10 miles. Better get cracking then. I genuinely didn't think I would be feeling this good today. But thanks to the restorative powers of beer, steak, Neurofen and Tesco's finest muscle-free spray, I am feeling far fitter than I deserve. You just can't get any better than this, look at it. Fantastic. And it makes the whole day a little bit easier walking in this, without the wind and the rain. We've earned it today. We walked through the crap yesterday, and so, We've heard the blue skies today. The northern moors feel that bit more remote, if that were possible, from their southern cousins. But there are still many examples of past human habitation and ritual to be found. So this is the great weather, it's the same circles. Got this one here and the one behind, running roughly north-south. They're excavated and re-erected in 1898, though not by all accounts in the right place. Leaving the mysterious misplaced stone circles behind, I start to gain some height. Over Sitterford Tor, 538 metres above sea level. Through Little Varicum. And onwards towards the Oakhampton military firing range. Flags on top of these poles would indicate live firing today, and I could get shot at. But it looks like I'll be okay. So, keeping a keen ear out for rogue gunfire and careful as I always am to avoid military debris, another climb takes me up towards Whitehorse Hill and the highest point of my adventure. In Devon, particularly, more height equals more rain, and more rain equals more bog. Old and tired legs do not make for the speediest progress. But this tortoise eventually makes it to Hanging Stone Hill, one of the highest points on Dartmoor, at a respectable 603 metres above sea level. Like a bloody idiot, though, I forgot the bottle opener. Even though at over 600 metres this could be classed as a mountain, you never truly get that sense of height on Dartmoor that you get, say, in the Brecon Beacons or the Lake District. 
The slopes are relatively gentle, there are no dramatic arrets or vertigo-inducing drop-offs. Remoteness? God, yes. There's a grassland desert, largely featureless, and over the whole adventure I have met only two other groups of walkers. You still get that enormous sense of scale, though. It gives you a huge satisfaction in tackling this barren landscape, yet reminds you how insignificant you are within it. And maybe it's that feeling of both satisfaction and insignificance that I love about walking. It gives you a justifiable pride in what you have done, and a humility in where you have done it. Losing height on a walk generally signifies the start of the end, and the last few miles are pretty easy, with well-defined military roads leading us off the hillside. There is a tiredness, but nothing like I was feeling yesterday. This tiredness is welcome, a reminder of everything I've done. So, that is the end of our two-day Dartmoor adventure. It very much at times yesterday didn't look like today was going to happen, but I'm very, very glad that it did, because it has been fantastic, beautiful weather and a lovely walk. But I'll tell you what, I'm very pleased to see this at the end of the day. There we have it, 26 miles of self-propulsion across one of the remotest areas in England in February. For the price of a pair of boots, a map and bloody effective waterproofs, I have had a proper adventure, an adventure in my own weekend. Now I know that school kids do twice this distance when they do the 10 tours challenge, but they are about half my age, with about half my BMI. For now, I feel immensely content. For this weekend, I've won my own battle with inertia and procrastination and gone and done something pretty special. And long may that continue. <laughs>